Well, one of you guys get your ass together and turn the right mic on. Exactly. One of the Chris Brothers for the love of God. Well, um, dude, let's talk. Let's talk about all everything that's shifting, everything that's going. I got my notes to my right, so if I look over, it's because I'm looking at my phone. Um, yeah. But yeah, man, some other stuff I wanted to hit was really what what is for, like because for me personally, I finally felt after a year of being here. I got my feet on the ground of how to do you. <laughs> as soon as I felt like, all right, we got the city night. That's my first thing. We're going to do the, we'll go around to the next, have some momentum. The whole world changed. And so what yeah. for you guys that have been doing this even a little bit longer than I have, what is some of the, the biggest challenges that, that you guys have had to face? Go ahead, Danny. Um, I think just the, the lack of being there, you know, there's no presence that's obviously like the biggest like factor here like I, I don't know like it, especially right now like I've never appreciated my students more than like right now just being yeah. in their presence and being able to just uh, grow with them yeah and yeah um, I don't know it's it's putting a, a big toll on me I'm not gonna lie just not being able to see them and uh, do what God has planned in a way that I don't know was normally comfortable now we have to do things that make me a little bit more uncomfortable. So that's a, I think it's a big struggle right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know what, man? I totally, I totally agree. I think that, I think the most difficult part is just not being with the students, you know, um, didn't realize it until this whole thing happened, but even outside of Wednesday night, I mean, we got connection points throughout the week. So we see them on mm -hmm. Sunday morning, on Wednesday night in life group, you know, we're connecting three or four times a week. Um, on an average and and just like the fun that it brings the joy that it brings like you know obviously Wednesday nights we're preparing and planning and all kinds of stuff but we're also having a lot of fun like you know with with the students and hanging out with them and just having that personal interaction and I know your guys hearts is as pastors and really connecting with your students and and being there for them and um, I think yeah the, just the, you know the, the biggest challenge is well one of the biggest challenges is just we're just not able to, to be together. You know, we're just not able to spend time together. And then in, in, um, I think, you know, in, in all of our planning, everything that we plan for, we plan to have as many students as we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, we've gone from this, like thinking of like, dude, what can we do to get as many students in this building as we can? And now that's all, you know, now that's all shifted into, uh, into a different thinking. So I think that's, that's kind of, you know, it's been a tough part for us. Yeah, I, th I think that's interesting because I, I feel like I'm probably on the other end. And maybe that's because I was still trying to figure my stuff out where I, this has highlighted how much I don't interact outside of Wednesday and Sundays with mm -hmm. my students. You know, like I have my core like that I kind of just, that are just close to me uh, and Amber and, and kind of that. Um, and I realized like our leadership team's pretty, pretty close for the most part. But I think this has definitely highlighted my, like my lack of um, like even an online presence other than a few posts here and there, mm -hmm. um, the, the small groups and how to do that and really, and really talk. Cause, cause like I've had kids text me or message me or, or whatever. And they're just like, Hey, like we miss you. Uh, keep posting, whatever. They're just saying different things. That's really encouraging. But as I sit down, I'm just like, dang, like this is all stuff I could have been doing throughout Already. this year. Right. And I wouldn't have to be trying to scramble so much um to, to keep it together and put put it back together uh because definitely i mean i definitely miss the kids and, and you do miss that presence that feeling of everyone being there and the room's loud and the kids are playing the games and yeah. you know half the kids are worshiping and you're mad at the other half or not and now I'm <laughs> like, oh, half <laughs> yeah yeah i know right hey, you know what? when we went when we went when i went to your to go speak at, at your church at, at the youth group dude like you i know it's an off night and i know that's not usually how it goes but your kids were still so into it. Like yeah. I left bragging about your kids. And I don't know if that's how they regularly are. Maybe they just stepped up to the plate, but literally I went back to my own team and to and Amber and I were talking about it nonstop where I was just like, man, like they were worshiping more with a track, a keyboard <laughs> and people afraid to sing into a mic than we do. And we have this amazing band. Like I love Alfred and the team. They do such a great job. Yeah, they do. Um, and, and I feel like they do a good job trying to bring the kids into it, but our kids just don't uh, a lot yeah. of the time. And so I left there, man, really, really bragging um, on, on you guys. So your students stepped me up and I sold a few leaders that are there 
and you know they're doing the, the dance or they're trying to get the other kids involved so no man like don't don't feel bad about that a little tangent a little side note but it, it was cool thanks i threatened them that's the only reason why that happened you better <laughs> I, yeah. yeah yeah my favorite part was how you were talking about somebody wasn't going to be there anymore and then she walked through so that was oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but definitely, we definitely feel the challenge of, um, of that, man. But, but I am excited. I'm, I'm pretty pumped up, which will lead to the next question. But I am pumped up at just watching everybody. Um, even, even Dorian and Allison from South Valley who aren't here today. Yeah. Uh, man, Love dude, you guys. Yeah. You guys yeah we, I text them all the time to try and be, like, encouraging and just like, hey, like, you guys are doing great. They, you know, they get nervous about, like, they just stepped into this role, too, uh, mm -hmm. a few months ago. And all of a sudden, they have to redo it all over again. Uh, but I am definitely really encouraged by what you guys are doing. Seeing your post, I'm stealing all kinds of ideas from you guys. I'm Thanks. like, hey, what do you? Which I know, I know at least for James, you're stealing all your ideas from Rich Wilkerson. So I don't feel that bad. <laughs> it's gonna funnel its way back to me. Uh, but it's cool, man. So, so with that, what what do you think has been the best thing about having to reinvent? Uh, youth ministry. I'm in a group chat with probably like 20, 25 youth pastors from Southern California AG. And one of the things that we've said in there is, man, everything's like, everything's on the table, right? If, if one, like, we don't have to, we don't have to feel like we have to be the one inventing something. Um, man, you see something that's working, use it, right? Mm -hmm. Because, and one thing I love about us is we're same team. It, we're not, we are not like, it's about my church, your church, this church, we're about the church mm -hmm. and we're same team. So we share ideas. We share the things that we're doing. If I see something you're doing, that's doing well, I'm going to learn from you and I'm going to use it shamelessly. Okay. And, um, because, but we want to do whatever we can. You know, if I see something that you're doing well, man, hey, I'm going to learn from you and then we're going to implement that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that like, it's, it's really a season right now. Um, that we actually, so what's the best thing about doing ministry right now is that we actually right now have an opportunity to see more than ever what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a balance there and we got to know who we are and you know who your group is and what you're doing and your kids and not feel like, oh, if they're doing that, then I need to be doing it. Or if they're doing this and if I'm not doing it, then I'm falling short. But finding the balance there, like knowing who we are and what we're trying to do but then also, man, I'm, we're, I'm getting to see all kinds of things that people are doing. And then mm -hmm. just, you just kind of, you know, it's like, I'll take that and we'll do this and we'll do this. And then along with the other things that we're wanting to do. But, um, but, but here, here's, here's what's cool. One of the cool things is that we've always had the ability to do this, what we're doing right now. And we've never done it. Why? <laughs> because we've never thought about it, right? We just never thought like, hey, you guys want to get on a Zoom? You know, it just never would have made sense. Mm -hmm. But now it does. And um, so I think the greatest thing now is we're actually, when, when, when things go back to normal, we're going to go back to everything that we had before and more. Exactly. And so we're learning new avenues. There's new things that we're learning how to do. So we're going to have everything we had before and more. And so that's what I'm excited about. Like we're learning new things. You guys, hey, we're getting better at making videos and editing and all this stuff that we've never had to do before. And so we're growing and, and that's, that's really exciting. I agree. I could even, I'll even like speak into that as just like the, the idea of like sh um, taking things from other people. It's like, man, there's nothing new under the sun, right? Like that's an old phrase that goes back. And I think it still applies here in, in this situation. Like nothing's new. Like everything that we've done, someone's done before. And we can't think of it as like a personal thing because it's really not like ultimately it's about God and we're doing whatever we can for the glory of God. And taking resources from other people and learning how to use it, um, fitting for your own group. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's like a great thing. And it's a great uh, way to save time too, because we can often spend time just like thinking, okay, well, what can I do next? What can I do next? Or what can I do differently? And there's really not a lot that you can do differently. It's just, it's, it's about you and, and what God is going to do through you. I think that's like really important to remember that because we, we're, we're nothing without God. As long as God's at the center of it, you know, he will make things come to pass. But we also have to put him work for it. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, think, it's, I think it's funny because I used to always, this was always my excuse for not doing anything like somewhat creative was one, I'm not that creative. Uh, just mm -hmm. in my mentality, like, I really need something to get me, get me my mind going. And uh, 
two, I always felt if I have unlimited resources, I'd be more creative because then I have the money and the software and all the things. And it's crazy because in this, I still don't have the money. You know, the churches, we don't know about giving, so I can't just go spend the card on, on all kinds of stuff. And I think in, the, in this moment, in this season, I've realized it's really when, when your resources are restricted, your creativity gets bigger. Because mm -hmm. now, now I'm thinking of all kinds of ideas where I'm just like, why well, never think about that? And, yeah. you know, there's stuff about me where I'm just like, dang, if I don't come out of my comfort zone now with the kids and being willing to be on camera and look dumb. And, you know, my thing is I don't want to be on camera because I have like three chins. And uh, every time I try to do keto, I added another chin. It had the reverse effect. It just, you know, hide it with a beard, dog. Yeah, yeah, that's what I got to do. I got to grow the, the whole beard out um, and, and doing all that. But I think one of the really cool things is that it has forced uh, – if it forces you out of your comfort zone, uh, but even in that, it forces you to be with everybody else outside of their comfort zones. And that's super comforting. Like when I'm watching stuff, I, I'll say this, like when James text was texting you about Instagram, you're like, my video is not uploading. And then it uploaded in two parts and you know, we're watching the thing. And then I see Danny put out like this perfectly edited teaching of him on his stage. And I'm just like, dang, I'm doing mine last. I'm going to land somewhere in the middle there. And, <laughs> and the truth is, is I have none of my setup. It's due tonight. Like I'm supposed to post it tonight. I haven't mm -hmm. even recorded the teaching yet. And so as soon as we're done here, I'm like, I'm going to go record. I'm yeah. going to put this on iMovie and we're going to do the best we can and we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. But already thinking about next week and the week after of just like, okay, well, we can do this. And I pay for Adobe. I've been paying for Adobe software for like last six months and I've never used it. But now I'm just like, I got all day long. Can um, I get your skin in? Yeah. <laughs> what? I'm just kidding. Oh, I I think, can I get your skin in? Yeah, you <laughs> put on my info. Like somebody's got to use it. I'm like, there's 30 bucks every month leaving out of my account for, for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but dude, you know what? I, I think it's really, really cool and, and almost like a little funny is because like you said, we've never done this. And this is always in the back of my head. Oh, let's do like a podcast type thing. It'd be fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I've been mentioned to you guys like last year sometime where I was just like, random idea, throw it out there. But it, it is really cool how we can just pull on each other and how I think even in copying each other, we can also make fun of one another and just kind of be like, dude, that was mine. Uh, you know, <laughs> or just throw like a little screenshot at you and be like, I know where you got this from. Uh, <laughs> like I wanted to do with James when he was preaching the message at City Nights. And I was like, that that illustration you're trying to do that the kids didn't let you do right, you still let me do right. You stole it. <laughs> that was that was Rick Wilkerson. <laughs> I know, I know, and such a good illustration. And those those kids, man, mm -hmm. messed it all up. It's difficult. I think that's uh, you know some of the you talk about some of the comfort zone stuff, and um, I think you know one one of the difficult things is like right like on a, on a normal Wednesday night, if uh, you know you go in and you don't have like your best Wednesday night it's limited to the kids that are in that room. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, everything that we're putting out is for the world to see. And um, so, but, but, you know, I think it, it creates humility. Like, um, you know, Wednesday night, I'm just going, what is going on, man? I'm trying to upload this thing. And then it comes in two parts. <laughs> then the second one was sideways. I'm just like, forget it. If you really want to watch it, you're going to watch it. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Like, I don't know what to do right now. But, uh, you know, I think it's, 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 uh, it's every, every week, you know, we're, we're learning one, you know, one or two more things that we'll put together and, um, and to continue to, to yeah. continue to get better, man. So it, it's a learning process. Yeah. It takes, you know, I think this whole thing, it just takes like a ton of humility and, um, and a teachable spirit just to say like, all right, you know, how, uh, man, how, how can we grow? What can we get better at? How can we do this better next time? And, uh, yeah, blew that one, but I'm I'm ready to move forward and you know try try better next week. You know that's literally how I feel about my first video. Like I look I look back on it now and I cringe watching it, and I also get freaked out because knowing that these videos are online. Like if I were to look for like another job, I'm not trying to leave FBH by any means, but I'm just saying like Edit that, that. <laughs> if that <laughs> if that were to happen though, like they're gonna see this content. So that's also that's also what kind of freaks me out because. Um, I don't know, I think about like prior to this whole uh, pandemic thing going down, like I felt pretty comfortable, you know, just, you know, speaking to my students because, you know, they understand the context of who I am and what I'm trying to say to them. So, you know, 
whatever my jokes or my mannerisms can get across and make sense. But like, if someone who doesn't know me just sees that video, like I, I, I think about it sometimes. <laughs> but, um, but knowing that coming into this week's coming video, like I'm playing into like my awkwardness and I think it's gonna p pay off, you know? Mm. So I think like sometimes it'd be even, even be worth like playing into it sometimes. Because I, I was very awkward this first one, and I'm using that awkward to, you know, make it better. That awkwardness to make it better, so. Well, Danny, I think, well, one, I thought it was good, but I definitely get what you're saying. Um, but two, man, I, I don't think having these things on, on, online is a bad thing. If, if anything, it's going to show your growth. Um, Absolutely. I just mean, like, by the first one, like, it's just super cringy. <laughs> You know, it'll help you though. Well, I think what it, what will help is that when you know you're a couple like like you said, what Christian's saying is that a couple months from now, it's always like you know like whenever you created that first post mm -hmm. and you posted it and you're like that's so dope, dude. That's the sickest thing ever. And then like a couple weeks later, or sometimes the next day, you look back, you're like, mm, no, nah. yeah. and or it'll sh it'll kind of help to show us like man how much you've grown, absolutely how much you've grown, and um. You know what? What I found, I, I haven't gotten to see your video, so I'm I'm not sure. But I think, man, we're our own worst critics, man. We're 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 so hard on ourselves, and um, so I just say I think the biggest thing it's you know, for us to just stay encouraged. And um, I think you know one thing that I learned from from last week is especially I'm trying to upload this video is 20 minutes long. Um, well, well, one is is uh, and I and I, I watched another youth pastor this week, Gary. He's a he's one of the leaders of SoCal. And he put out this, uh, this devotional and you know what, man, it was super powerful and it was like five minutes and I'm sitting there thinking like, you know, are these kids going to on, on Instagram, are they going to get on Instagram and watch a 15 or 20 minute message? Are they going to have the attention span where nothing else is drawing their attention? Are they going to be able to hang on that long? And so I think, um, sometimes I can feel like guilty for not producing something, for not like, for not putting my all into it and, and having an opening and a beginning and a middle and a close and all that kind of stuff. But really just thinking about if you can say it in five, then I say it in 20, right? If we can get a message across in a short period of time. So I'm going to, I'm going to give that a shot for this week. I'm going to film it when we get done here today and just see how it goes. I'm going to post it before it's due and <laughs> make sure that I have zero issues uh, uploading that mug today, this week. Mm -hmm. There you go, man. That that's the way to do it, right there. And and I think you're right. I think we gotta lean into not what we want, but what we'll get across. What yeah. we'll get across to these kids. And the same, like like I love. I have my formula, man. Like I I open a, I open a message with the reading of scripture. I ask a question. I pray. I tell a story. Then I start hitting my points, right? And I'm just like, I can't do that because they'll probably start watching the video. But like you said, five minutes in, they're gonna just kind of okay. Well, what's next? Who's the next yeah. face on Instagram? So one of the things though I do like that Danny is doing with all that is is he made a YouTube channel, um, and and posting it there, right? Am I wrong about that? I feel like I no, saw. No, no, you're correct. You're okay. correct. We have a YouTube channel, and you just gave me so no response. You just. I did. That's <laughs> right. I was saving it for right now. So, <laughs> what what exactly is going down is like we have a YouTube channel, and we're putting all our content up there. Um, the thing though is we're not we're we're plugging our Instagram with the YouTube link and everything as well as our Facebook page but through our newsletter is like where we hopefully get like the most traction and it's mainly because like all of our parents are on that newsletter mm -hmm. and they're aware of like the video lessons that are coming out and I'm attaching like small group questions um, I guess you can call them family group questions because they're, they're more family oriented mm -hmm. so like you know if I mean these kids are these students are at home you know they're with their families and you, at least with my students, their their parents are pretty um, like, hey, you should watch this. You need to watch this. Make it a priority, kind of thing. And um, we get responses. Like I've gotten quite a few like email responses, and then like there's some comments here, but then like a lot of the Instagram DMs, um, a lot of the students are watching and and are interacting with that. So I've I've seen that working so far for my group. I don't know what it's gonna look like for the long run. But like the YouTube channel, I think is working and just constantly plugging in the links. Um, th those so far, it's been working hey, can for you, me. Can you talk about that for a minute, man? How does that? Uh, so, cause that that I um, 
a little bit of our process for all the videos that we're putting out right now. Um, we basically film them, get them up on YouTube. We have a you know, church YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And then um, we'll either upload them from there onto our app or, um, or then we'll broadcast them on Facebook. So base, but that, that works for Sunday morning, but for our kid, for our students, I want everything on Instagram, obviously. Mm -hmm. So you're, you are just posting the link to YouTube on your Instagram or how does that work? So I have the link in my description on the, on the FBH page, on the students page, and then I'm putting it on the stories as well. Okay. Yeah. Cause you the stories, right from the stories? um, yeah, if you, and swipe up you can oh really the link and then they can swipe up and go to the go to the youtube link oh dude yeah. okay yeah, uh, so that. so obviously like we talked about like all the connection points have changed you know i can't go hang out I'm talking about doing starbucks drop-offs which is so cool but it does eliminate the fact that i can't hang out with that student while i bring them starbucks and talk mm -hmm. so like what what would you say and james you can start um what are you doing now to make sure that interaction with the kids stays fresh that the, 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 the fact that the, I guess the hope for me is that they still feel valued by me, even though we can't see yeah. face to face. So what are some of the things that you're doing say individually and even as just as a big group to keep that connection going and, and keep it growing even? Yeah, for sure. So uh, a, cu a couple of different things. I mean, outside of the obvious, ob obvious things, I guess, you know, we're doing a zoom groups. So our life groups have gone to zoom groups. Mm -hmm. Uh, dude, we did something and still this, it was so fun. <laughs> On Friday night, we did this thing called Zoom Challenges. And um, we basically just made up this game called I Can Do Better Than That. And um, we got all of our students on, on the screen and I offered up a gift card to Amazon and um, basically said, we're gonna, we're gonna play whoever can do, like, whoever do like the craziest thing inside of, you know, obviously boundaries. Um, going to win this gift card. So the first student started off like, uh, I'll eat a jalapeno. Well, someone else would be like, I can do better than that. I'll, I'll do this, right? And so he actually ended up with one of my leaders um, giving himself uh, a bath with a gallon of milk. Like He took all the condiments out of his refrigerator. And, and then I, I let one of my other leaders, like two of my leaders, like if one of them say, well, I can do this, they were the thumbs up or the thumbs down. And then like they, you know, he ended up giving himself this, this bat, but it was, you know what, man, it was just like funny. I died. I have not laughed so hard in a long time and it was just good to like get together. Right. Yeah. And just to spend time together. So we've been doing that. Our zoom life groups. Um, I've, I've gone, I've never gone on Instagram live before. And I've been doing that just kind of like even sometimes randomly and just to like say what's up. Um, so, but outside of those, those kind of things, I think the intentional things that we're doing is uh, we've dispersed all of our students um, amongst each of our leaders. Mm -hmm. And so each of our leaders has a group of five or six students that they're responsible for, or they get the, they get the, the pleasure of keeping in contact with texting. And so basically our heart is, is like, if we can answer right now, what every one of our students is doing or how they're doing, then we're winning. Like if we can, if we can say like, Hey, how is so-and-so doing? You know what? They're doing good. I've kept in touch with them. Their family's okay. This and that. Cool. It, as long as we can keep, as, as long as we have tabs on each of our students, how they're doing and that they know that we're making a conscious effort right now to, uh, to, to keep in touch with them, to let them know like, Hey, you need anything. We're here for you. Um, and so, you know, to be honest, a lot of the zoom groups, they haven't been well attended um you know we get on instagram live it's it's i got i, I got a, a little community of about 15 or 20 students that like always get on and the rest you know aren't aren't but for the other ones just just like personally reaching out texting and phone calls just to reach out and let them know yeah. that we're here for them we love them and we're thinking about them i agree that's um something our groups are doing right now so we've we've been doing small groups for a while obviously like at on campus so essentially we just take those groups and bring them onto this platform. So I know like Wednesday nights, our high school girls and junior high girls have two different Zoom groups that meet like 6.30 to 7.30 and then 7.30 to 8.30. And the boys, it's a little bit more difficult to get them like onto the Zoom game. I don't know why though. Like it's, it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's they're just like, ah, I'm, I'm okay. Like, I don't think any like dude is sad. Like they're just playing video games at home right now. Like I, I know yeah, I wasn't- They all join like this. 
Yeah, the, the, the corner of their head and like guys. Like that. <laughs> yeah. What's going on, guys? Hey. <laughs> so that's like a little bit tricky, but you guys talk about Instagram a lot. Um, are all of your students like on Instagram? Most. Like, yeah. Most. See, the thing is, a lot of my students aren't. Hmm. I, I obviously, like, the junior hires, there's not a lot. And yeah. if anything, it's predominantly high school. And even then, they're like super, like not like into the whole Instagram thing. You know, it's it's, it's weird. So I have that platform, and I still use it because I do get interaction, but it's not like my main platform. I would have to say YouTube has to be my main platform at this point, just because of the the fact that all the traffic goes there. Like I don't, a lot of my links, like if I'm looking at the analytics of it, like most of them are just straight directly going to the channel and watching the video instead of like clicking on an, uh, a link from Instagram or a link from Facebook. Mm. So it's, it, it, it's interesting to see that. I was just curious if you guys like, per, that's like your main market. Or... Yeah. So in, Instagram, Instagram has been, um, I think for both of us, but for me, but I think what, what you said right there is my junior high probably is more predominantly on YouTube because, you know, and parents are going to be a little more scared or, or worried if they're, they're sixth grader has an Instagram account, you know, posting pictures, but pretty much every tablet or phone or TV. Now if you have a smart TV has the little YouTube app right there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely something that I think uh, that we I've, I've underutilized and, and I'm trying to figure out how to do all that and use all, use all that. I'm like not tech savvy for being 27 years old. I'm like the least, well, you're old, but for being 27 <laughs> years old, I am like, I got an, I got, I have an out. <laughs> but I have a young wife and she's awesome at it. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I know that's where all your real content comes from. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. So um, that's cool. Like, I love that. I love that because I think, I think it's super important to figure out, you know, as leaders, as pastors, and even just as people in general, right? Because this is training me how to reach out to people outside of ministry, just in my regular life. Mm -hmm. Where I'm just like, oh, I didn't ever think about texting this person. The other day, I uh, FaceTimed my best friend in Texas. And we just like hung out and we just like talked and, and I was like, we've never done that ever. Like we'd go hang out before or, or since I moved here, we'd text once in a while, but like that was cool. And I was like, dang, like we need to utilize this technology the best way we can, because <laughs> if not, we're losing it. Go ahead, Danny. I, I just, it's funny because you mentioned that story. And the other day I was on the phone with my friend and we did not talk for like 15 minutes. We were just on the phone we, we just didn't talk it was so weird like it was just i don't know what, i didn't know what to say but like we just wanted to hang out so like i guess hearing each other breathe was good enough <laughs> like let's at least look at each other or you were just no nah, it was just let's let's look at the the phone minutes ago <laughs> that, that's a little weird that's yeah, you lasted a lot longer than I would have. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, like, okay, so part of it is like I'm not just like sitting and just like you know, just looking at the phone. Like I'm I'm moving around. I'm doing things. So like, yeah, we, we were talking at one point, and I was like, oh, I'm in the middle of doing something, and I realized I am still on the phone with this dude. He is not. <laughs> I don't even know if I've ever done that with Amber when we used to date. Yeah, maybe one where we just sat there and listened to each other breathe. I don't know. Yeah, it's a good time. Honestly, y'all know it's now. <laughs> you know what, I'll call you, and we can just listen to each other breathe. All right, I can. I'll, I'll be able to tell if you have like sleep apnea just based off your breathing. <laughs> How good I am. <laughs> um. All right, man. La last question, and I'll let you guys get out of here. Uh, what uh, what is something you're doing to keep yourself encouraged during this time? Like we're all isolated. Like I said, we have all the technology. All this stuff's cool, but I'm a I'm a people person. And like, so if I'm not hanging out with people, I get all just like, I'm like, Amber, she's like, just relax. I'm just like, I can't, I miss being around the crowds and laughing and, you know, mm -hmm. doing that stuff. And so what, what are some, even just personally, some stuff that you guys are doing to, to be encouraged and keep, to keep, keep motivated, I guess, to keep going on. Go ahead, Danny. Um, I think like, you know, Breathing on the phone with people is a good start. <laughs> like honestly, I, as weird as that sounds, like I I've been I've been making a lot more phone calls to just my friends and like my family because like I just I, I'm not gonna do you know like <laughs> like hey how are you guys doing I, I probably haven't called you in like three years but it's good good to hear from you you know just 
No, I think, um, you know, just reconnecting with people is like a big thing. Um, I think it goes without saying is, you know, make, maintaining a good relationship with the Lord and just, you know, re, you know relying on him. I, I think I do that a lot and it's weird because it shouldn't be weird, but I, I, I like to just push away the problem by just saying it's, it's, it's in God's hand. And sometimes that could not always be the best thing to do because sometimes you got to work through things. But like, I think in this case, like I feel comfortable just, you know, it's in God's hands, it's in God's hands, you know, whatever happens, like it's in God's hands. Yeah. You know? but I think I find a lot of like uh, rest in that, but definitely like, you know, just calling people and keeping, um, trying to just keep in touch with people is really um, helping me get through it, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, that's good, man. I think, um, you know, I think, I think the biggest thing for, for me, and I, and I'm probably, I'm probably a, a little more of like a silver lining kind of person anyways, that I think it in, in the midst of something really, really difficult, I'm just going to try to find whatever I can that's positive, And I'm going to, I'm going to like push into that. Um, and so I think like, I think what's really been encouraging me is watching how God's moving in the midst of these difficult circumstances. Um, I think finding opportunities, um, you know, I think one, one of the things that I know I've had to be really careful of, um, and because of my tendency to like lean in on the, just the positive thing and then just like go that, and I'll do the same thing as Danny, you just go all that direction, right? I'll just be like, it's gonna be all good. We're gonna come out ahead, it's gonna be this, this. But then like remembering at the same time, like people are really, really hurting right? Mm -hmm. like there's a lot of people that are hurting. So I can't, I'm not trying to celebrate everybody else's hurt and, and be celebrating when other people are really, really hurting. But I think like, I think what's in, what's in, in so in the midst of that and, and all the balance in that is just, is just finding these places where when we take a step back and we look at big picture, I'm not focusing on the numbers that the media is throwing up every single day and, and all these things. I want to take a large step back and say, okay, God, you're in control. Um, man, this is all like everything, everything that happens, the whole world's in the palm of your hands. So how, um, man, you know, what can, what, what can I be doing in, in these moments to help push forward your plan and, mm -hmm. you know, to be a rock when other people are hurting, um, to be a source of hope when there's panic and anxiety and, and all, all of those things. And I think really for me, all of that stems down to like, man, I got, I got, a, you know, I've got a lot of time on my hands. And so like, I got like spending time with the Lord, reading the word and praying and just having, having a, having a really strong devotional life. Um, and it's just gotta be like the, the rock in, 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 in these times, man. So I think like, you know, focusing on, focusing on positives while also kind of, you know, not wanting to just roll over the reality that people mm -hmm. are walking through. And looking for like, man, how can you know? How can we grow and be uh, and be uh, positive in this season? Yeah, man, I, I love that. I okay. think I think that's so good because we like. I don't feel worried at all for myself, you know. Like I, I'm good, but like you said, I also don't want to just run out there and be that guy while literally people are, are dying, and it might be a low percentage number and all that stuff. But like that's scary. I don't want nobody to die because I was careless or because I I you know just kind of out of mm -hmm. sight out of mind type of thing um so that's really cool man well i'll, I'll tell you what uh, i'm gonna stop recording right now so we can all take our filters off in a second but uh uh you guys you you guys are definitely an encouragement to me seeing everything you guys are post your guys' friendship um man it's awesome even though danny does not respond to anything for yeah right, for right. why now though because he's just breathing with his friends on his phone instead of responding to my text it's cool. I'm too busy breathing, bro. Right now. <laughs> I heard that. I'm trying to center <laughs> myself. <laughs> but no, I love you guys. And if you guys have anything to say uh, before we before we end this, go go for it. Danny, I just want to breathe with you, bro. Like that's just where I'm at. <laughs> yes. I just want to. You know what? Honestly, sometimes we just need to breathe. We just need to. <laughs> we need to just be aware of like people's problems, and we don't need to, you know, harp on them or pull back on them we just need to breathe and be there yeah, man. All right, well, i'm just hey just grateful for you guys love you appreciate you learning from you and and uh, excited to see all the things that you guys are doing and um you know it's just it's encouraging to watch you guys growing and, and being creative 
and uh, putting the pedal to the metal right now. Okay. Well, I love that I get to breathe with you guys. Um, and I can't wait till we can all be in the same room again to do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs>